A month doesn't go by where we don't hear about NASA detecting a near-Earth asteroid as it whizzes between the Earth and the Moon, creating what's called a near-miss. And while there are plenty of concerning near-Earth asteroids and Atira objects out in our solar backyard, as we explained in one of our oldest videos ever, it might surprise you to learn that asteroid impacts are not only common, they can also be felt around the world. We're going to be talking about some of the most devastating asteroid impacts since the year 2000. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment to your favorite asteroid-based movie, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. The impactor event that killed the dinosaurs was so powerful that it punched a massive hole in the atmosphere and released energy estimated to equal 21 to 821 billion Hiroshima hydrogen bombs. The original hydrogen bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945 had an explosive power measured at 15 kilotons. Today we have way more powerful bombs, but the original atom bomb was more than capable of devastating an entire city. The most powerful bomb in the US arsenal as of 2020 is thought to weigh in at 1.2 megatons. But what the heck is a megaton anyway? Well. A kiloton equals the force of 1,000 tons of TNT, otherwise known as dynamite. And a megaton is equal to 1 million tons of TNT. In fact, the megaton is a unit of measurement only used to identify the power of nuclear weapons, at, at least until now. So knowing that a kiloton equals 1,000 tons of TNT and the fact that the original H-bomb had a payload of 15 kilotons, we can calculate the original bomb's power at 15,000 tons of TNT. Yikes. Also, this really brings up a question. Has anyone ever tried to detonate 1,000 tons of TNT? Because the only thing that comes to mind is when you break Minecraft by lighting too many TNT blocks at once. So why am I telling you this? Well, it's kind of important to understand what these units of measurement mean, especially since our planet has been hit by at least 26 asteroids since the year 2000, each of them releasing destructive force equal to 5 to 15 kilotons. Are you scared yet? And when we think of asteroid impacts, we usually think of planet-ending rocks around the size of Texas or Australia. Movies and reactionary fear-mongering. Television lean heavily into the idea that we're basically doomed if an asteroid hits the planet. So if we've been hit by large-ish asteroids from 2000 to 2014, why hasn't the world ended? Well, one reason is that the Earth is really, really, really big, and these impacts, while large to us, are like mere pinpricks to the Earth. The other reason is that these asteroids, while large enough to wipe out a city or even several cities, aren't large enough to plunge the Earth into a nuclear winter. At a press conference on April 22nd at the Museum of Flight in 2014, three fairly famous astronauts took to the stage and revealed new data that showed evidence of 26 Hiroshima-scale asteroid impacts since the year 2000. The astronauts in question were Dr. Ed Liu, former U.S. shuttle and Soyuz astronaut and co-founder and CEO of the B612 Foundation, and Tom Jones. No, not that one. President of the Association of Space Explorers and Apollo A astronaut Bill Anders, who is also the first chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and former chairman and CEO of General Dynamics. The evidence in question came from data that had been released by the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, or NTBTO for short. The NTBTO operates a network of sensors that monitor our planet for unauthorized nuclear detonations. They achieve this by listening for something called an infrasound signature. An infrasound signature is a low frequency sound that is too quiet for humans to hear, somewhere around 16 to 20 hertz. These sounds are generated by a number of natural and anthropogenic sources, including man-made atmospheric explosions such as nuclear weapon detonations, as well as meteors entering our atmosphere and asteroid impacts. The NTBTO discovered evidence for 26 of these impacts, and Ed Liu had this to say about the evidence. While most large asteroids with the potential to destroy an entire country or continent have been detected, less than 10,000 of the more than a million dangerous asteroids with the potential to destroy an entire major metropolitan area have been found by all existing space or terrestrially operated observatories. 
because we don't know where or when the next major impact will occur. The only thing preventing a catastrophe from a city killer sized asteroid has been blind luck. Yeah, blind luck. That's it. Most of these asteroids have exploded either high up in the atmosphere or have impacted in the ocean. But what are some of the most powerful impacts we've detected? And if we detected a so-called city killer asteroid that was on a collision course for say, I don't know, New York, how could we avoid that impact? The largest recent encounter with an asteroid to date is obviously Chilibinx, which exploded over the Russian city of the same name. What you might not know is that it released 400 to 500 kilotons of energy when it did so, shattering windows and injuring over 1,000 people. That's the equivalent of 500,000 tons of TNT and half as powerful as a 1 megaton nuclear bomb. It's a miracle that no one was killed. But rest assured, if that asteroid had actually impacted with the Earth, we would be talking about an entirely different story right now. As mentioned before, most of the 26 asteroid impacts detected by the NTBTO between 2000 and 2014 have either exploded in the atmosphere or they've plunged into the ocean. In South Sulawesi, Indonesia, several asteroid impacts weigh in over 20 kilotons of destructive force in 2009. Now, all of these impacts weren't detected by Earth-based telescopes or deep space satellites. So the B612 Foundation set out to change that, and we're planning to launch the Sentinel Space Telescope mission that was supposed to create the first comprehensive dynamic map of our inner solar system, and hopefully in the process detect over 200,000 asteroids within the first year of operation. But we're almost halfway through 2021, a fact that is extremely depressing in and of itself, and this is the first we are hearing about Sentinel. So why didn't we hear about its launch? Well, mostly because it was cancelled after the project's funding was cut and its fundraising efforts were unsuccessful. This raises some other questions, of course, the most important one being, how are we detecting near-Earth asteroids and what countermeasures are being developed to stop them from hitting our planet? Those familiar with this channel and others like it know that the solar system is pretty huge, but it's hard to visualize the distance that we're talking about here. The orbit of Mars, for example, is 228 million kilometers from the Sun. The Earth's circumference is 40,233.6 kilometers, and it would take 8,300 hours to walk that distance. And 40,233.6 divides into 228,005,666.90627 times. Let's just say it would take a really long time to walk that distance to Mars, if you could. So hopefully now you have a better idea of the distances that we're dealing with. And we haven't even talked about the asteroid belt. Therefore, it shouldn't be too surprising to find out that even though we've taken great strides in finding potentially hazardous near-Earth asteroids since NASA was given a government mandate to find 90% of them in 1998, which they failed to do by their original deadline because the solar system is absolutely massive, though we have detected 25,000 near-Earth asteroids as of 2020, so there's that. But if we did detect one of these Earth-ending objects, there are at least a few options for dealing with them. And no. Sorry to all of you 90s asteroid movie fans, nuclear weapons are not an option. Asteroids between 25 and 45 meters are capable of destroying a city, and objects over one kilometer are thought to be a threat to life on our planet. But one thing we haven't talked much about is how fast these things are traveling. Asteroid Bennu, which we just landed a probe on, completes one orbit around the Sun in a little less than two years and is moving at 28.0 kilometers per second, or 63,000 miles per hour. Apophis, an asteroid that has been talked about quite a bit as a potential high-risk object, is moving even faster than that. But if Apophis or Bennu were suddenly on a collision course with the Earth, sending a large spacecraft out into space to orbit the asteroid could be a potential solution. The idea is that the spacecraft's gravity would tug the asteroid off course. One problem with this idea, though, is that the spacecraft would need to have a lot of fuel. Another potential solution is to send a swarm of laser bees to vaporize it. No, laser bees are not the cheesy plot of some supervillain, but rather sunlight-powered lasers that would vaporize the asteroid's surface, creating ejecta that would inevitably change the asteroid's speed. And if that change is significant enough, it would increase the likelihood of the asteroid missing the Earth. Remember that movie, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World? Well, it's an okay indie movie, where an asteroid is going to hit the Earth and there is no way to stop it. 
Spoilers. The asteroid hits the Earth in the end and ends up arriving a week early. But this would be impossible and would almost certainly mean that the asteroid would miss the Earth because orbital mechanics. If you dug this video, be sure to drop me a like and comment whether you'd like to see a whole episode devoted to asteroid deterrence. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of ScienceGad. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.